What triggered Saturday's stampede at the FNB Stadium? Did the number of spectators tally with the number of tickets already sold before the match? And how different was this Soweto derby from those played at the FNB Stadium before? Has the footballing fraternity learned any lessons from the 2001 Ellis Park Stadium disaster? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Seidu. The Premier Soccer League has appointed advocate Vincent Maleka to investigate the loss of life that occurred at the FNB Stadium during the Carling Black Label Champions Cup on Saturday. The stampede occurred minutes before Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs kick off and reports say many people were not aware of what had happened as the match went underway. There are allegations that the sale of fake tickets on match day contributed to the disaster. Both Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs football clubs have sent condolences to the families of the two fans who lost their lives. They wish those injured a speedy recovery. Meanwhile, Sanko says security measures and evacuation plans at sports stadium need to be reviewed. For its part, the PSL says it is giving space to the ongoing investigation by senior counsel. 42 lives were lost at the then Oppenheimer Stadium in Orkney. That was in 1991. And 43 spectators passed on during the Ellis Park Stampede in 2001. The two teams were involved. We are live. Therefore, you can call us. The numbers to dial 089-110-4210. Our Twitter handle at question time to four. My guest today, Chief Superintendent Wayne Minar. He's the spokesperson of the Johannesburg Metro Police Department. And Chris Malemaja is chairperson of the South African National Civic Organization here in Gauteng. And we are expected to be joined by our reporter uh, on the line. We're not sure if he will be available, but we'll see if we can get him. But before we get into the discussion, let's have a look at uh, what Ivan Kosa and Kaizam Taung had to say about the stampede. We were gathering information to make sure that, you know, we leave no stone unturned because it's a sensitive matter. Uh, we remember that, you know, we are victims of uh, the Mwepe Commission. We do everything in our power whenever events of this nature are staged to make sure that we comply. I take this opportunity to express on behalf of both labs our sincere condolences to those uh, Families affected, uh, the bereaved families, and also those who suffered injuries, and uh, <coughs> and hope that uh, they we get they get a speedy recovery. Uh, we are going to engage obviously with the families of the deceased. Well, that's Chincha Guluva himself there, and. Uh, Ivan calls that, well, what Dumila Mateza calls Irvin. Irvin calls that there, the chairperson of Orlando Fo uh, Pirates Football Club. Gentlemen, let me welcome you to the show. When, what happened? Where, where was Jock? Yes. You see, uh, what I can say is that if the necessary preparation was done as far as the uh, traffic management and controlling of spectators was concerned from as early as 11 a.m. when Soweto Highway was blocked off and then later on Nazareth Road was blocked off to be able to manage the situation in such a way so that fans could get into the stadium effectively. And those coming with vehicles were directed onto the parking areas at the Expo Center at Nazareth. Then, uh, there was the unfortunate incident at the gates, but that will have to be investigated because there are a number of allegations mm. at the stage as to why it had happened, how it had happened, and who was responsible for what had happened. Okay. So, so that will be investigated. So how far do you go as 
metropolis um, in as far as that stadium is concerned? Yes. The, the outside of the stadium is the function and responsibility of the JMPD. That is to ensure uh, safety of uh, traffic, to ensure the safety of uh, pedestrians, <coughs> and to ensure that the traffic is managed in such a way that it's effective and safe for all the fans going to the stadium. But then, well, I know you're saying there's an investigation, but people are saying, eyewitnesses are saying that there are people who didn't have tickets who managed to get to the gates. Yes. That is why uh, we want to talk about uh, later in the show about what we're going to do in future, about our plans for future games. No, but you've had, I mean, this has happened in 2001 in Ellis Park. I was there, fortunately, then. And, I mean, it's happening again. I, I think after some time, there seems to be lapse of concentration. I don't know whether they think the authorities believe, OK, the fans are behaving. This is a cuss, uh, whatever the beer uh, 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 cup it, it, it is. Maybe the fans are not going to be as unruly as in this, it's a league or a cup, another cup game. You see, I can tell you also that this didn't happen in 2010. Yeah, so, because you were uh, subjected to very strict laws. I actually must say it. You respected more FIFA than you respect uh, the local uh, uh, football associations. Well, you see, what had happened was there were safety measures and plans put into place alongside with a FIFA. And unfortunately, we are going to have to revert to those plans. And it's going to be very strict. We're going to have to arrest where fans don't comply. Okay. So that's how we're going to have to be approaching the fans and uh, approaching the games going forward, where we'll be policing these stadiums with the SAPS and the other law enforcement agencies. Okay, let me just uh, talk to uh, my colleague here, uh, Wapapa. Uh, Sfiso Ramara joins us on the line. He's our sports uh, reporter here at the SABC. And he was at the stadium. Sfiso, welcome to Question Time. What did you see? Well, uh, good evening, Mito, um, and to the viewers as well. You know, uh, Initially, I was not meant to go to the stadium because I had to do the match, you know, match report live for the news. But as soon as the news filtered through that there's a problem, I had to drop everything, phone, national traffic, to try and get an escort because it was not going to be easy to get to the SMP stadium without the parking ticket and whatever. I got there, I think, just before half time. And I spoke to, you know, witnesses, the uh, people who were there, uh, to try and find out exactly what happened. And according to a guy that I spoke to, uh, you know, uh, people were moving around and they were frustrated. Fifteen minutes before kickoff, uh, you know, they were anxious, uh, wanting to get into the stadium. And uh, I think they were trying their luck. One of the gates was not locked and, you know, it opened and people started uh, running through and that's what led to the stampede as far as, uh, you know, the fact that I have uh, gathered. And it's a very unfortunate thing, you know, following what happened at the Ellis Park uh, Stadium uh, 16 years ago. Uh, you know what? I think it's a good thing that... Uh, you know, the PSL, they've already appointed a senior country to try and get to the bottom of this. But not only that, SAFA also, they are serious about, you know, trying to establish uh, the facts, what actually happened, uh, as well as uh, the, the, I mean, the, the, the PSL. So it, 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 I think it's a good thing that, you know, uh, for everyone to, you know, try and establish the fact, because this is not the right thing. This is the fact uh, stampede in South Africa in the past uh, 26 years. And you can go back to, you know, the big events that we've 
hosted as a country. We hosted, uh, in terms of soccer, we hosted the Conference Cup in 2009. We hosted the World Cup in 2010. And both uh, events were incident-free. Yeah. So I'm not sure if uh, this time around uh, security was lax or whatever, but we can't uh, point fingers right now. But I think uh, it's for the relevant people uh, to investigate and try and find out exactly what happened uh, on that unfaithful day. But now, Spiso, how far true are the reports or allegations that the PSL says this wasn't our match, therefore we shouldn't necessarily be held responsible. But, uh, you know what, I was listening to uh, the conference uh, at the PSL uh, offices uh, yesterday morning uh, addressed by uh, the chairman of uh, the Land of Pirates and the League, uh, Dr. Ivan Koza, as well as uh, Kaza Matau. Uh, the match was not going to be staged without getting prior permission from the PSL. So yes. permission was granted. This is not a PSL match. Yes. Remember, we still uh, we still off yes. in South Africa. But a match of that caliber cannot be staged without the approval of the league. So permission was granted by the PSL to stage that particular match. Okay. Now, Sanko. I know you have released a statement saying the security measures need to be looked at. Yes, thank you. Let's start by convening our seat. Condolences to the family, joining the Kaiser Chiefs and a lot of parent management to say those who are in hospital, we wish them a speedy recovery. Of course, it's a civic movement, starting from all the questions that are coming. What matters most to us is life. Oh. We must never fool ourselves whether the game was officially was a PSL match. What we are saying, for that kind of match, we need highly intensified security to ensure that we don't lose any life. It can't be correct that time and again, we come here, we go to stadium in state of joy and happiness, we count casualties. One would assume that lessons have been learned. The Open Hammer Stadium, the Ellis Park, why now? You are correct to say when Minar, it's like you respect some other bodies and undermine other bodies. We are not also not happy with the manner in which this thing happened in front of SAPS, JMPD, and the stadium management and the security in the very center. We are in the stadium time and again, we can see this. There is this advanced technology where the camera can go all around. Mm -hmm. Why didn't this spot out? Then the fact that the match has to carry on and people are claiming that there was no such message as that, that is not correct. Unless and unless some people are claiming to organize these events, pocket enough money, go without caring about the lives of the fans. Sylvester, you and Jamiston, welcome. Yes, good afternoon, sir. Welcome, Sylvester. I just want to make a few recommendations as far as this is all about. My condolences to the family that have lost. We wish also the speedy recovery to the people who got injured. One of the recommendations is one. The computer when it prints the ticket, it must print a ticket with a name of a particular so that not many people will buy 20, 30, or 50 tickets. Those are the things that start uh, making unlawful things because of one will buy many tickets, then at the end of the day, he will sell them out. <coughs> and many people, would, uh, you, you will assume that the ticket up, oh, oh, yes, bought all. But at the end of the day, that those people that are the one that happen to make illegal things with those many tickets. Like you you saying that, they, like they, one of the... the, 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 the Speaker over one of the radios said that ticket must be having uh, uh, ID numbers if, if, if it comes to a push, so that you see the the reduplicating uh, reduplicated tickets. Mm. Okay, Sylvester, thank you, thank you very much. Indeed, I mean, reports were Wayne that tickets were sold out uh, a week or so before 
uh, the, the day of the match. Now, how do people who don't have tickets even get closer to the gates? Yes, you see. Um, now, if we must start implementing the 2010 uh, safety measures, that issue of people getting even close to a certain zone next to the stadium yeah. will never be able to happen because they would already be identified two or three zones prior, to, prior yeah. to the stadium. <coughs> So it's very important that we're going to have to start intensifying. But now, why are you not implementing those rules? You see, for, for a long time, where we've been having uh, a local big games, which we have been implementing safety measures on a scale that had worked. Mm. However, now the situation will have to change we'll have to revert to the plans that we used. Okay, hold it there. Let's take Bhutan. Bhutan, you are in Pulukwane. Welcome. Thank you for, for taking my call. You're welcome. Firstly, it shows the lack of intervention by the Joint Operations Committee. Yeah. I think the Joint Operations Committee must tell us the category level of the event that was held on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, we must take it from there. After having categorized the level, what was the amount of security deployed there and for what reason was that security deployed? I mean, how does a match start? People die, no official wait, a match continues. It shows a black life is very cheap. What happened with the security level that uh, was uh, 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 deployed in 2010 FIFA World Cup? Why can't we have it now? We should learn from what happened in Ellis Park. Those recommendations we must check where they implemented, who was supposed to implement them, and why were they not implemented. For example, now, the sports minister is not here to come and give account as the sports minister. Where are they? They are going to come and issue statements, but we have lost lives here. It shows a black life is very cheap. Ask the gentleman to tell us, chop the status deployment police officials. Thank you very much. Right. Yes, look, uh, the caller has a point. I mean, in, in that uh, the level of, of security measure uh, at the last game was not comparable to 2010. So now, unfortunately, we're going to have to introduce those safety measures. And it will not be uh, as usual. Uh, a, a big game such as uh, we had on Saturday. People will have to comply. Unfortunately, even as far as consuming of alcohol is concerned. During 2010, we never had people going into the stadium under the influence of strong alcohol. Well, they were drinking inside the stadium. But it was a different scenario. It was managed and it was controlled. Somebody had the rights. That's fine. Yeah. But it was managed. So this time, we are going to have to manage it going forward. We will have to have zones okay. where people will not be able to enter at all. No cellulars. We'll, we'll work on the circumstances okay. and, and the conditions. All right. You know what uh, cellular is in the, uh, at the stadium? Yeah. Yes. No, we, we know. We know it's a nip. We've got, <laughs> we've got the, <laughs> the technology. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we're taking a quick break. When we return, we'll be taking your calls. 89 This is Question Time. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. We're talking the FNB disaster. Uh, that occurred on Saturday during the Orlando Pirates and Kaiser Chiefs match. And in Fos Loras, we've got Cabello. Cabello, welcome. How are you, Mpo? I'm well. Thanks for the call, KB. I'm fine. Mpo, you know what, me? Yeah. What everything that we are talking about, supporters coming late to the stadium, fake tickets, uh, cellulars, we know all these things from long time. Mm. But where is the solution? We don't have the solution. They come up with implementations, and I mean, they come with recommendations, yes. but they don't implement. 
So my point is, where is the solution? In the 90s, we used to have cutting razors, right? Yes. Where if there's a chief pirate game, we know we are going to watch the masters of chief yes, pirates yes. or the under 19s or the ladies Correct. around 11 or 12 o'clock. Correct. It, 12 o'clock midday, we're already in the stadium. And the actual game is going to start 3 o'clock. So where are those things? Now they're bringing musicians and everything. <laughs> why, why, why do we need musicians in the stadium? We need curtain raisers so that we can go to the stadium early to watch the curtain raisers. <laughs> you, <don't want, laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? You don't want babes who do more there before. No, we don't want babes who do more. This is not a club. It's F&B. We must go there for the whole day to enjoy ourselves. Where are the cutting razors? Okay, Cabello, thank you very much. Well, KB doesn't want babes what you mother. But at Sanko, what are you going to do to ensure that the safety of the fans is a priority? I think it is a simple measure that needs to be taken throughout all games. Uh, awareness, because all what we need, remember, we are not part and parcel of the management of those sure. who organize sure. those. But what we can do and what we are calling upon whoever is going to the stadium is to arrive early mm -hmm. because these games are known earlier. Why can't we follow the overseas strategy of buying tickets as early as for the whole year? Mm -hmm. Then we know that this one is going to help. Of course, we'll support the proposal by the JMPD to say, let us go back and use the 2010 strategies, mm -hmm. such as those who are going to stadium, they must be known as far as in the city. Mm. that around the stadium there's no one will be selling the tickets, there will be no exchange of the ticket. Of course, you mentioned a very important issue. There's nothing wrong to drink liquor in the stadium, provided going into the stadium it is well controlled. Remember that incident was not caused by liquor. In 2010, yeah, sure. we drank liquor inside the stadium. Okay. There were no problem, those who were drinking. Mm. But we are calling upon those who are buying tickets to buy tickets early, to be early in the stadium. We are calling the JMB and the staffs to ensure that they are visible each and every corner. So that slightly mistake or incident that can tamper with whatever is happening in that side is able to be reported. And the reaction, rather to come here and say, we will do this. For how long are we going to be recognitionary? Rather to be proactive of problems. Okay. Because the 2010 has set a pace that South Africa has advanced. From now onwards, you cannot undermine any game because each life counts to us. Wayne, what can the supporters um, expect from now uh, onwards? You see, uh, uh, what's important, I think we must uh, call on fans. Yes. Not to buy fake tickets. If you buy a ticket to, bo to go to a big game, it must be bought from an authentic office. It must be bought from Compu ticket. You cannot buy a genuine ticket in the street. If you buy a, ge if you buy a ticket in the street, you must know there's a possibility that something is not right. And that when you get to the gates, you are going to be turned away. Yeah, but those tickets must be scanned because the only scanner is just the tear piece and you walk through? No, 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 fine. How are we going to do it? We will also uh, uh, have to relook at okay. how, how we're going to be uh, checking on tickets for people going in. And, and also, people won't be allowed to go anywhere near to the stadium okay. uh, until we've checked the tickets if it's authentic tickets, and then they may cross over the second zone or third zone before they come into the final zone right next to the stadium to get in by the, by the turnstiles. Okay. We've run out of time, unfortunately, but thank you very much for making time to come and talk to us. Well, thank you. indeed, from Question Time team, we also send our condolences to those uh, two departed uh, soccer supporters who uh, died on Saturday during the Kaiser Chiefs and Ronaldo Pirates match. May their, their souls rest in peace, rather. And that was Question Time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. From the entire crew, you have yourself a wonderful time. Goodbye. <laughs>